Mrs. Gaines. Here. Mr. Musa. Here. Mr. Roberto. Here. Mr. Zorch. Mr. Palmer. Mr. Howard. Here. At this time, I'd like to open the floor up to hearing of this is part one. This is where anyone, and this is where anyone in the audience can stand at the podium and ask their name and address and speak of anything that's on the agenda this evening. Seeing no one, I move to the office of the first resolution number 228, approval of minutes. Second. Do I have a motion on the floor and second? Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. And that motion passes. Solicitor, solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. Legislative report, Mrs. Swagger. All our report is on the update of this cyber school legislation that actually we passed a resolution. Um, unfortunately, there are four um, bills being presented regarding cyber schools, none of which um, deal with money. Um, of cyber schools. They deal with some ancillary things, um, ethical leadership, um, some other items. So um, we'll keep you updated. Um, the word now is that maybe something will be presented in, in um, the fall. So, um, but just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Education and planning, Mrs. Mays. Yes, thank you. We'll be doing report with Adam Coley. Uh, happy May. <laughs> so it's field trip season, as May always is. I haven't been in school much this month, neither has anyone else. Um, sixth grade campus this month also, so a lot of seniors are there. Missing calculus tests, which we're kind of a little bit jealous about, but that happened. And fun days um, at LES, Mountain View, and um, the other... So, uh, <laughs> I didn't go to elementary school. Um, we have them do like career day, art sessions at the La Trobe Art Center, and uh, story sessions at Adams Memorial Library, and Olympic Day and other spring programs are starting since the beginning of the year, and it's almost summer, so thanks. Now, I'm kind of a sad reminder that this is my last time up at this podium to annoy people. So, in front of you, I gave everyone a invite to my graduation party. Please come on. <laughs> Uh, but more importantly, the junior high will have a choral cast concert on Wednesday, May 15th, tomorrow, yay. And Tuesday, May 21st, is a band concert. And for senior high, uh, Ms. Weevil is making a team advisor role for the maker space in the library, meaning that uh, she's having the student be in charge <coughs> of setting up the 3D printers and the laser cutters and such. So that kind of gives that person leadership role and learn how to use that technology. I mean, pretty great way to go about it, I think. And well, the most important, May 24th is the last day for seniors. Which includes me and Chloe. I think you have to go one more day. Alright, thank you very much. As Adam just alluded, we are saying goodbye to our two student reps. So we have a little hug and appreciation for them. They've done a wonderful, wonderful job for us, and we certainly appreciate their service.
talk of the both of you will look forward to having a good talk. <laughs> Current enrollment reports attached. Uh, I'll just tell you that kindergarten at this point is at 205 total students, uh, 59 at Bagley, 80 at LES, and 66 at Mountain View. And that's a current number as of this afternoon. Uh, this is kind of Mark Woods gave me. At this point, I would be surprised if we get to 220, but it's not totally out of the question. But what we'll get in uh, August is that it's, it'll be a plus minus. You know, someone will come in, someone will go out as they go back and forth. So. Thank you. Um, okay, I, I will move for adoption of resolution number 229 to approve the ECAT Academy Memorandum of Understanding between GLSC and GLEA for the 2019-20 school year. So moved. Second. 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 <laughs> we have a motion on the floor and a second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. Matter for adoption resolution number 230 to the summer educational grants and your investigation. Second. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I will bundle resolutions number 231 and 232 to vote agreements. Uh, number 231 approves the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit Student Services Interagency Agreement for the 1920 school year, and 232 to approve the Adelphi Education Services Partial um, ESY Summer Program Letter of Agreement. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. And then we'll resolutions number 233 and 234. 233 being to approve the Adelphi Village Incorporated Linkage Agreement. And 234 to approve the University School um, 2018-19 Summer School Program. Second. Motion on the floor and second. Any <coughs> comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passed. And then I will move for adoption of resolutions number 235 and 236. First of all, I'm going to approve the West, Western Pennsylvania School for the Deaf 2018 19 Summer Extended School Year Program. And 236, going to approve the Ar Arcadia Home Care and Staffing Letter of Agreement for the LPN services for the 2019 20 school year. Second. We have a motion and a floor and a second. Questions or comments on that motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion passes. And I move for adoption of resolution number 237 to approve the dynamic measurement group incorporated Acadians data management, formerly known as the University of Oregon, the Douglas Data System Usage Agreement. Second. You want to tell us about that one? Sure. It, uh, we've used for a number of years Dibbles, uh, which is a, a predictor of reading fluency in our elementary students. The company was bought out and separated into two, and Acadians is the new version of Dibbles. It's something we've used for 13 years plus. Do the kids have to be able to say Acadians? No. <laughs> they can Dibbles. say it, they pass. <laughs> <laughs> We have the motion on the floor and second. Question, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. And lastly, I move for adoption of resolution number 238 to approve the um, tuition students for next year as listed. Second. Uh, there is a second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. And the next picture on the meeting will be on <coughs> June 18th at 5.30 p.m. here in the CSC. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Finance, I uh, believe we have a presentation.
know what? Uh, my fault. I forgot to uh, put the presentations out the sign in, so I'm going to hand those out to anybody who's interested. I didn't know. Anybody else like a copy? For anybody who thinks they might want one, yeah, if you want to put them up front. Do you want them? Okay, I know as everybody's aware, we do this every year in May. We're required by law to adopt the proposed final budget uh, prior to May 31st, since this is our new meeting. Uh, the month of May, we need to act on this tonight. Um, 2019-20 proposed the expenditure budget. So I'll start with the expenditure side. Uh, we're looking at a uh, total expenditure budget of $57,105,874. Uh, sorry, I, uh, that's a bad presentation. Sorry, Jess. Okay, which is an increase of a little over a million dollars, and the percentage increase is about 1.85%. Okay, so what I want to do is highlight the major areas of changes. Okay, major, major increases and major decreases. Um, wages are going up by 411000 almost $412,000, which is a 1.72% increase. Health care is going up by almost 32000 which is a 0.7% increase. Teaser's retirement is going up 344,000 or a 4.37 percent increase. Technology 95,000 or 9 percent. Curriculum uh, 92,935 dollars or uh, 32.69 percent. Transportation almost 60,000 dollars or 1.9 percent. And business operations we're seeing a decrease of 71,000. For around 0.87 percent decrease. So let me dive into that a little bit more and explain what is going on in each of these areas. Wages, um, as I mentioned, projected increase by about four hundred twelve thousand dollars. First, let me give you a little history. Um, prior to 2011-12, the average annual wage increase for contract employees increased by a little over three percent. Since that time, since 2011-12, the average annual wage increase for contract employees has increased by about 1.2 percent, which is significant um, change. And the reason for that change is um, we've offered several early retirement incentives, and we've also been able to take a chance, uh, advantage of certain staffing changes. And what I mean by that, um, as individuals have retired or have resigned, we've been able to reallocate staff throughout the district and eliminate um, positions, which has been very, very beneficial in controlling our costs. This year, we have 11 retirements, one resignation, all of those individuals are going to be replaced. Okay? And we're actually increasing two new positions. We had to add one elementary autistic support teacher and a personal care assistant. We are anticipating with these staffing changes will result in a wage reduction of $378,000. And just to explain why, when you have an individual that leaves that's at the top of the scale making you know, close to $90,000, um, when you replace them with a sorting teacher making around $45,000, obviously there's a significant um, uh, savings. Um, what we try to do is if we can identify areas where we don't need to replace the staff, um, you know, we're saying close to $90,000 just in, just in salaries. But with all of these changes, the retirements and resignations, we're seeing a, a reduction. So historically, you'll see, and normally what you'll see is, Wages go up anywhere from seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. So, the fact that it's only going up four hundred thousand dollars this year, one point seven two percent, you know, we're we're definitely benefiting from that. Um, healthcare, okay, projected increase in healthcare is around thirty two thousand dollars, or 07 percent. Um, uh, there is a medical freeze this year on our premiums, so there we we propose a medical freeze within the consortium we participate. In addition, we're doing a rate alignment, and basically what that means is there's a base plan within the consortium, and then there's plans that kind of float around it. Every now and again, they look at it and they say, are the plans that are either richer than the base plan or less rich than the base plan, are they priced properly? Um, and, then they re and then we realign that. Um, 
what we, what we ended up seeing because of the plants that we offer here, the rate of alignment actually reduced our premiums, which is a good thing. So when we thought it was going to be flat, we're actually seeing $151,000 decrease overall in premiums. Um, as I was insinuating there, we participate in the Westmoreland County Public School Healthcare Consortium. So it's a large group of schools throughout Westmoreland County who come together and uh, operate their own consortium. We're self-funded, which means that there's a consortium board that sets these premiums. Now we work with a third-party administrator called Hub that gives us advice, and they help us track all the trends and the claims and make recommendations to us on you know, how to um, you know, incentivize healthy living lifestyles and those things with our membership. Uh, but ultimately, the board is made up of both one member of every city the school district, and uh, we set our own premiums based on the feedback that we've they received. Um, the consortium has been successful in controlling premium increases. I'll tell you, the market trend is about a 10% increase per year. What we've done within the consortium, our 10-year average is 2.5% increase, and our five-year average is 1%. So we, this has been a very successful partnership, and we're very fortunate to be able to participate in this program because you know, your healthcare costs normally go up anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 a year. And if you remember last year, we saw a decrease in premiums of 2.4%. So the fact that we were able to go to decrease last year, propose a 0% raise uh, in premiums for 2019-20 shows that we're doing very well. And I think a lot of the initiatives that sort of puts in place for our members is reflected in these low numbers. So I'm showing an increase overall for healthcare of $32,000. Yet you see now $151,000 decrease in overall premium costs. So, what makes up that difference is other post employment benefits. Um, this year we had uh, 13 retirees enrolled in our other post employment benefits. Next year, because we have 11 more retirees, we're going to have 24 retirees enrolled. That's going to uh, come to an additional $183,000 cost. So, yes, in my previous slide I showed we were saving over 300 some thousand in wages. But some of that will be offset because we'll be taking on additional health care contributions. Okay, Beezer's retirement. I've been speaking about this, it seems like, for years and years and years. I don't have as many slides, but it's just, just as important today as it was in the prior years. Um, our projected increase is about 344000 The employer contribution rate for 2019-20 is projected to increase to 34.29%. This is an increase from the current employer contribution rate of 33.43%. So just keep in mind, for every $1 paid in wages, we are redirecting an additional 34 cents towards the user's retirement incentive. Okay? So that is very, very, very significant. 2018-19, um, the budget of user's retirement was seven, almost 7.9 million, 14% of our operating costs. In 2019-20, they're projected to be a little over 8.2 million, which is 14.5% of our operating costs. This is to give you a little bit more of an idea. In 2009-10, our actual fees of retirement was a little over $1 million, which is 2% of our operating costs. In 2017-18-19, our actual fees of retirement, when I say actual, so these are audited numbers. It was almost 7.5 million, so that is extremely, extremely impact went from 2% to 13%, which is almost a $6.5 million increase or 634% in eight years. So, you know, we're doing a very good job of controlling all other costs that we can, um, but this one, and it's like, I don't have a slide on this, but remember, these are just state law, it's not local decision. You can't decide to not participate. You can't decide to set these rates. These rates are state, set by the state government. And again, it is by law, and we, we are required to uh, follow that. So um, just to give you a, a little bit more history, in 2005-06, the employer rate was 4.69%. The net employer cost was a little over $557,000. In 18-19, as I mentioned, it's 33.43%. The net employer cost is almost $4 million. 19-20, going to 3429 The net employer cost is a little over 4.1%. And what the most uh, date information provides the 2005-06 as being the highest rate. It's projected to go to 37.39%. Um, 
which is a net employer cost of $5.3 million. So again, 05, 06, we're going to go from a little over a half million to over $5 million in 25, 26. So how does this impact the district's millage, uh, um, which I think the most, most people wonder? The 10-year average mill, millage increases around 1.23 mills per year. Of this amount, one mill per year has gone to Pizzers, okay? Which means the balance, the 0.23 mills, has gone to non pieces increases for things such as salary and benefits, transportation, plan operations, special education, cyber charter costs, as well as supplies, textbooks, and equipment. Um, so the vast majority, obviously, of the direct fees are from the cost. This, this grid here is just to show you, and I know it's hard to see, the black bars are expenditures which include the cost of Peasers retirement. The orange bars are expenditure, all other expenditures, not include Peasers retirement. So again, I view this as what we can control. And we can control those orange bars, and I think it shows that um, this school board, this school district has done a pretty decent job of controlling those costs. Okay, technology is one of the other areas. Going up by 95,000 or 9%. Majority of it is for software costs. Um, there's an increase of 62,000 as a result of rising costs for existing software needs as well as because of new curricular software needs. And I think most of you are familiar with software and how that works. Um, those costs, they get you. Once they get you and you start utilizing them, those costs tend to go up on an annual basis. And as far as our curriculum goes, more and more technology is being incorporated into that curriculum, which means more and more software is being needed. In addition to that, uh, we're, our fiber optic costs are increasing. We have a need to, uh, they increased by 15,000 because we had a need to increase our WAN from one gig to 10 gig as a result of additional network traffic, which is caused by additional cameras, phone system upgrades, and more computers. So it was at the time we needed to make that adjustment. It is that time for us to make that adjustment. So because of the fiber optic costs, we have technology infrastructure costs that are going up as well. They increased by $34,000. Again, it's the infrastructure upgrades to support the one gig to 10 gig adjustment. Um, we plan to use, so if you look at the top, it says $95,000. That is a true increase to our budget. But we also have some additional uh, capital purchases that are not reoccurring, one-time non-reoccurring capital purchases for technology, we're recommending to use $9,000 of our unassigned fund balance uh, to make those purchases. So ultimately, it looks like it's going up by about $185,000, but budgetarily, we're only going to be in the fact of about $95,000. The other 90, we're going to pull from the reserve account. Curriculum, projected increase by almost $93,000. It's for new science curriculum purchases, basically new science textbooks. Okay, new science textbooks, very expensive costs, much more expensive than the programs we upgraded in the prior years. Um, so we're looking at budgeting more for $92,000, almost $93,000, but we actually need about $195,000 worth. We're proposing because this is sort of out of the ordinary, it's higher than what we've needed in the past and what we need in future years. We're recommending <coughs> Unassigned fund balance. And for those of you who haven't heard me say it before, we only recommend using fund balance for those one time non reoccurring costs. Because if you use it for reoccurring, those costs are there the next year, but those funds are not available next year. So you put yourself in the hole if you use it for reoccurring costs. So I've identified two areas of non reoccurring costs where I'm recommending using fund balance. Transportation, uh, it's increasing by about 60,000, almost 2%. The 2019-20 contracted increase is a 3% increase. Um, we're in the middle, or at the very end of the seven-year contract, year seven of seven. I just wanted to review year one was a, a decrease. I don't know if you can tell there, but it's a 6.17% decrease of what we were able to negotiate. Year two is a weight rate freeze. Year three and year four um, were 3% increases. Year five was a rate freeze. Year six and year seven with three percent increases. So again, this contract track expires. So we're currently seeking proposals. We're going through the same process. We're currently out seeking, like I said, uh, request for proposals from various carriers. So why is it three percent? Is probably what you're thinking. 
It's reduced by 1% because we've been able to successfully be able to reduce the number of vans and minibus costs that we have um, by being able to consolidate routes as well as having students that require uh, specialized van transportation um, that have graduated and move on. In addition to this, you know, I should highlight you know, our, the, the vendor that we're currently dealing with with Vance does an excellent job of sharing those costs um, and, and consolidating our routes and working with other districts so we're sharing uh, uh, van and move bus costs with others. So we're very fortunate to have that group to be able to work with. Them. Business operations, a decrease of 71,000. Um, we're, we're recommending uh, capital project costs, a uh, decrease of about 148,000 makes up the majority of that. Um, the EWCTC costs, the tuition costs there have increased by $46,000. We've shared that previously with the board. Just a reminder, it's based on the average daily membership. Our, our school district is sending more students to the CTC. It increased by about 1.01%. Which makes up the majority of the cost increase. Um, also, cyber and charter regular ed tuition increase of about nineteen thousand uh, dollars. Projected cyber and charter regular ed annual tuition rate increased by one hundred and ninety dollars per year. Okay, so summary projected revenue changes: locals going up by around two hundred thousand dollars, state over four hundred thousand dollars. The majority of that money goes to fees, which because they reimburse us fifty percent of our increased costs. Federal 62,000, any other zero. So we're looking at a total change of about right around $700,000 in additional income. So let's look at the local piece. Real estate tax collections are going up by $209,000. That's without even a millage increase, okay? The reason it's going up is based on the 2018 uh, Westmoreland County Assessment Property Value Report, Clear Lake Church School District experienced an increase of $2.3 million growth in its assessed value. So we're very fortunate to live in the school district and seeing its assessed value continue to climb. Not all school districts are seeing that. So we are very fortunate. Uh, the 10-year average uh, from you know the change in assessed values are around 1.7. So we're slightly higher than the 10-year average. So 2018 was better than one year. Earned income taxes, we're recommending an increase of $50,000. Um, since Act 32 collections have been in place, um, required a countywide tax collector, we've increased our earned income tax from 3.1 to 3.8 million dollars. So it's certainly worked, and we are certainly benefiting from it. The two-year average is 3 million 750 thousand. Currently, we have 3.7 million dollars budgeted. I'm recommending we bump it up to 3 million 750. Um, if we continue to get 3.8, we'll bump that up a little bit more in the future. Demand response, we're seeing a decrease of 35,000. We participate in the Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland program, the PDM program. Um, it fluctuates year to year based on electricity capacity value, basically supply and demand. In 2019, 2020, there's an abundance of capacity, which is uh, driving the program pricing down, so we're getting less money. Um, refund of expenditures, that's a hit or miss one, kind of, it kind of fluctuates year to year. We're back recommending de decreasing based on trend. The two-year average is uh, 238,000. We have 280,000 budget this year, so we're going to recommend 250 um, to reduce that about 30,000. State allocation. It's based on uh, the governor's February uh, state budget proposal. Basic ed is projected to increase by 132,000. Special ed is projected to increase by 41. Um, we are once again assuming planning on reimbursement for 16, 17 and 18 borrowings for debt service. Uh, projected rental sinking uh, fund subsidies increasing by about 103,000. Assuming increase funding for PEASERS because again the 50%. So by law the state is required to match the 50% of increased cost due to PEASERS retirement. Projected increase is about 172,000. So what this chart is just showing, state funding is in the black bars which includes uh, the cost of PEASERS, State and federal funding in the orange bar removes um, PEASER. So if you look at the, the orange bar, our funding from the state and federal government without the cost of PEASER's retirement is basically flat. And so we have to generate additional income from other areas. <coughs> Excuse me. So the budgetary amendment, state funding, still don't know where our state budget's going to be next year. So that'll change, you know, in the month of May and June. So 
There's always an unknown there. Federal funding. You know, Mr. Perenka shoots me emails in the middle of the school year saying the federal funding just, you know, dropped our dropped the funding by X dollars. And it, it happens throughout the years. So what they tell you you're getting, you don't always get. They change it um, based on available funds. Uh, Pieces retirement rate. Well, we know that it's going up. We don't know when it's going to stop going up and start declining. Uh, special education. You know, it all depends on who moves in and out of the district. Uh, you get one or two students, it can be very costly. Cyber school enrollment and tuition. I know there's a bill out there that changed the funding method for cyber schools. I'm not sure how much support that will get, uh, but that is a very expensive um, cost. Um, future budgetary concerns. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, future budgetary concerns. Teasers, employer rate increases that I mentioned before. We, can, we anticipate those continuing to climb. Future capital projects. Um, Mr. Thomas attended our last finance committee meeting. Uh, he's in the process of developing a very, very thorough five-year rolling capital plan. We know there are a lot of uh, uh, projects that are on the, on the forefront here that will be coming uh, down the pipe. And, you know, we just need to make sure that we continue to budget, budget accordingly. Um, I always say we have over $180 million in capital assets. We want to make sure we maintain those. Um, state budget allocation. You know, we hope that they maintain a certain level of funding, but there's a lot of uncertainty there. Same with the federal. Um, Act 1 index <coughs> only allows you to increase to the average of the statewide average weekly wage and employee cost index, which meant that we could increase taxes this year, I think, to about 2.3 mills. Um, you know, if something were to happen with state and federal funding, or if we had, uh, you, know, you know, significant spikes in one of our operating costs, uh, we're, we're stuck, you know. It means we're going to have to start cutting programs, and nobody, nobody wants to do that. Early retirement incentives, as I've mentioned, we've offered several early retirement incentives recently. Uh, we're relatively young staff, so we can continue to offer them, but we're not sure how many people are going to be taking advantage of them. Special education is always an unknown. Transportation, obviously, we're out for proposals right now. We hope to be able to control those costs, but nothing's guaranteed. So a recommendation, approve a proposed final budget the amount of 57 $105,874 million and use 193,750 unsigned fund balance. Um, rec this recommendation reflects a shortfall of 340,000, so it would call for a one mil increase. The next steps to continue to evaluate the operating expenditures and cont to continue to review potential revenue funding sources. So that's kind of my piece on the finances. Does anybody have any questions? Or anybody on the finance committee, uh, it's something I didn't highlight that you thought maybe I should have touched on. Okay. So we'll continue to monitor. And if there are any changes for the January meeting, I will make sure to um, share that with, the, with, the, with everybody here. So Dr. Tepper and Mr. Fremka, I know you guys wanted to highlight a few things here. I'll turn it over to you. <coughs>
if, again, they have common teacher planning time, they've increased their class periods, and they have advisory time for students, again, to work to build those relationships where students are assigned to teachers to talk about various things, career paths, career interests, the um, importance of soft skills when you're out in the career world, et cetera. And Lunch and Learn, which is an opportunity, again, for students to receive that tutoring and remediation that is needed, but also an opportunity for our students to have some unstructured time throughout the day and help them make that transition from high school to college. There were plenty of school visitations. We had spoken about these before as well. Mr. Mays had taken a group of teachers out to High Tech High in California in Vista High School, where they were able to, the group of teachers were able to really dig in and look at true project-based learning schools along with project-based learning lessons. And with that information, continued to work with the staff to build the project-based learning lessons. We did receive the professional development from the secondary, from the junior high and the senior staff. Senior high staff and everybody had been um, attending for professional development in that area as well. Um, one visitation that we did this year, it was with uh, Mrs. Caslow from the junior high group of teachers, Mr. Mays and myself. We had a visit down to Montour High School, or excuse me, Montour Middle School, where we were able to look in, at their artificial intelligence program. So that was quite exciting. And in fact, at our junior high school, we are going to be implementing some components from um, that Montour, school, uh, Montour Middle School have utilized in some of our current classes on artificial intelligence, and we're continuing to invest, investigate that. So that's quite exciting. I also know that our teachers will be visiting Borough here this month, actually at the end of the month, um, uh, to see uh, what they're doing as well. As far as career expos, Anthony Princeton is our mentorship coordinator. He's been with us now for two years. He's done an outstanding job. This year, we've increased our career expos to three full expos, which encompass the entire five career pathways. Um, so there was much growth there. We talked about three years ago with our career pathways, the opportunity for our students to do job shadowing, mentorships, and teachers in the workplace. Last year, the number of experiences for our students through job shadowing and mentorships was approximately 103 opportunities for our students. That has increased actually to right under 150 opportunities, where our students had the opportunity to either shadow or participate in a mentorship throughout our community. Courses were added this year to support the career pathways. Some of those courses, uh, Introduction to Hospitality, uh, Customer Service, um, as well as a Project Lead the Way course entitled Biomedical Pathways. With the Career Pathway courses that have been implemented, dual enrollment opportunities have, have also been available to our students through the um, Intro to Hospitality, or excuse me, through Customer Service, and this year we're looking to have dual enrollment um, with the Intro to Hospitality. Um, we'll turn this over to Mike about the district-wide unification system. Just last week, we were able to uh, go fully functional with a district-wide uh, unified communication system. And, and for some, you may think that's just a new phone system. But really, what it is is a, a way to better enhance communication across the school district on a unified platform, uh, which would also assist us in the event of an emergency. Uh, we did stop the lead training with the staff last week here uh, during the service day. And Dr. Jenkins, who was the presenter, talked about the need to call 911 in a situation. And do you know how to do that from your phones? And you got to know what your location is. And it was great to be able to tell the staff that A, with the new unified communication system, you dial directly to 911. And B, you don't have to remember your location because when that call goes in, your location is identified. So this is a big improvement to uh, not only district-wide communication, but safety and security upgrade as well. Um, and additionally, the, the next bullet that's under the uh, Unified Communication System uh, is safe to say. Um, this year, uh, Act 44, part of that legislation was that we had to implement an anonymous report tip, uh, an anonymous uh, reporting system for students, um, staff, community members, etc., to report tips to us, uh, students grades 6 through 12, 
um, concerns that they may have relative to student safety, uh, drug use, alcohol use, abuse, bullying, etc. Um, and we were able to successfully implement that plan according to the Act 44 legislation. If I could jump back, we also had a course um, entitled Expressive Art Mentor, which was implemented this current school year. And that involves students with special needs working with individual students who may want to pursue something in the field of um, art, working with special needs students, or even um, music. We have a music course with that as well. I talked again about the professional learning communities and the fact to see the growth with the professional learning communities and our teachers identifying essential skills that our, our students need to know and be able to accomplish and then taking the data from those assessments from the essential skills and really drilling down and it's great to hear at the secondary level practicing flexible grouping with our students so you have a team of teachers who are working with a team of students training students, whether it's for accelerating or drilling down into the skill that a group of students are just having a hard time understanding. Um, the elementary, they're you know, well versed in that, and to see that continuing to come up through the secondary level is awesome. Social emotional learning, we have discussed the number of mental health issues um, that we continue to deal with with our students here. Um, and we're no different than any other school district as well. But to um, embrace social emotional learning in the actual curriculum is quite important. And we had the opportunity to have our K-12 staff uh, participate in professional development on that. There were two professional development um, opportunities for our staff. Um, one Mrs. Golovich had, and um, it talked about compassion fatigue which, um, you know, in the teaching profession or education profession, you're always helping, always helping, always helping, not taking care of yourself many times. And there were strategies not just to utilize with the students, but also um, as a professional there. We also had um, called coaching and consulting come in um, who addressed various ways to utilize um, mindfulness strategies, I should say, um, for students as well as teachers. There's been a lot of work done, and with Gino, with Gino Gel, I know has worked very closely with Lindsay Picasso, as well as the elementary principals. So next year, to so embracing social emotional learning at the elementary levels, again, integrating into, into the curriculum. And at the junior high school, I believe two months ago, um, Mrs. DiCasolo presented a course that will be offered at the junior high school in social emotional learning for our students. And there's been discussion at the senior high how we can embrace some of those areas and needs um, as well. We talked about different things such as having, uh, I don't want to call it student lounge, but it can be time out, lounge, or wellness lounge um, for students to possibly go to um, and have some teachers that are trained to assist those students in those moments just to take that minute to decompress and get them back into the classroom. But really to think about and reflect on um, their emotions and, and how can they work better to handle those and continue to be in the classroom. Um, a lot has uh, continued on project-based learning lessons um, on our at daily days. Groups of teachers have worked on those lessons. Next year, we actually have two courses, again, that were presented to the Board of Education two months ago, where we have a team of teachers who will be providing two courses with project-based learning opportunities for our students at the senior high school. So again, you're seeing the professional development that have, our teachers have participated in, and now this year, the implementation and utilizing that professional development the following year. We always talk about the 40 developmental assets, and the key is relationship building with our students. You know, we want our students to be successful. We have rigorous courses. We want them to see the relevance in these courses, but if teachers do not have the relationships, with the students, none of that's going to be possible. We continue to utilize the 40 developmental assets and actually have our teachers implementing lessons in relationship building throughout K-12. Yeah. 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 Before I jump in on those last three bullets, I'll just say that when you look at, at professional learning communities, social emotional learning, project-based learning lessons, these are district initiatives 
and, and any one of these is significant in, in the, the cost of implementing it can be quite expensive. Then you look back at what Dan shows you, and he says the budget's going to increase by one mil. That's because we sit and plan with the principals and the building administrators on the best way to phase these items in. Um, it, for example, project-based learning, 7 to 12 focus over the last couple of years. With it, we're going to get to that training in the elementary month, but we don't do it. But you can't go K to 12. You have to figure out the best timeline to do it. So it's about planning out your professional development, not just for 1920, but where do you expect to go in 2021? Dr. Pepper talks about professional learning communities and what impact they've had at the junior high school. And she always compliments the elementary school uh, about how they work in professional learning communities. But our eye is on that same training that they did 18-19 uh, and getting that worked into the elementary. Again, maybe not next year, but having a plan for three, four, five years down the road and implementing that plan in a fiscally responsible manner so that you know we can, we can absorb a, a, a retirement cost, et cetera, uh, that comes from the state. Um, high, high impact instructional practices was really a, a big focus for the elementary this year. Uh, and we're talking about things instructionally that teachers do in the classroom that have a high impact on student achievement um, and, and student learning. So what are we talking about there? Um, we are talking about providing appropriate feedback to students. We're talking about vocabulary strategies. We're talking about uh, metacognitive practices. We are talking about using reach survey data and using actual data from our kids that we, we got through the reach survey. Through and, research institute. Yeah, to, for developmental assets. To determine the, the best way to build relationships with our students. Um, Wildcat Wisdom is a part of, uh, it's part of the culture in the elementary school, but those things that I just talked to you about are topics that they discuss in their faculty meetings. So we're not talking about fire drill dates anymore, we're trying to have high impact conversations uh, around high impact instructional practices in that time that they have with their staff. Friday we completed the Stop the Bleed training. Dr. Jenkins uh, from Excella Health came out and provided an entire day of professional development to our staff on how to stop uh, uh, how to stop bleeding. Um, and, and obviously this is a sign of the times, this is a sign of, of issues, you know, in a mass casualty incident, how could our staff members, our students save lives quickly? Um, he came out and did an entire day. It cost us nothing for the training. He brought seven $300 bleeding kits, uh, bleeding control kits with him to be placed throughout our buildings. Um, and the thing that we talk about with the staff is, yes, we're talking about that, that major incident, that CNN incident, but at the same time, kids are kids every day. And a kid may be a kid and sustain a, a massive injury to be suffering from blood loss, and that math teacher who steps out of their classroom to see what's going on maybe in a life or death situation just from a kid being a kid. So uh, I have great feedback from that. I was glad to get that done on our entire staff. Anyone that wasn't trained on Friday, we will catch uh, with another training. And another thing that we were able to do for the first time, I believe, uh, ever maybe with the new program that we're instituting, um, uh, last month you approved the, the purchase of the new K-8 science program. We were actually able to start implementation training this year. Um, usually we would do that in the summer or right before the school year started. The, the science uh, committee, the group that got together, the building principal said, wouldn't it be great to give teachers a jump start on that this year? Uh, so working with uh, Hootman from Harcourt, uh, they were able to ship materials to us uh, so that we could get our staff members trained. We did a K-5 training in the morning, a 6-8 to training in the afternoon. So again, we're, we're not, staff members aren't coming in over the summer. summer. This is not an additional budgetary uh, impacted item, we did it through the course of the 18-19 uh, years. This is a list we always talk about, when we talk about relationship building, we also talk about climate, culture. Um, some of these um, bulleted items I've already <coughs> spoken about, that these, these items are all ways that we continue to build those relationships and continue to build a positive culture school climate. Um, one thing I will jump down to again is the social emotional learning piece. I had mentioned earlier that um, the junior high school, Mrs. DeCasolo and Mr. Shivitz were planning a trip to go to Borough. It's actually for the social emotional learning component. Um, 
I had spoken about a different professional development prior to that, but the focus for this is social and emotional learning, not the artificial intelligence that we went to from one tour. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, the Career Pathway Manager Survey was implemented last year, and again, Anthony Princeton was um, uh, very uh, the one who kicked this off uh, at the senior high, as well as um, we used it at the junior high, where the students identified their strengths, their career interests, and they continue to go back to that and update their profile. Um, that's just another way for teachers to have the opportunity to get to know students' interests, interest, strengths, etc., to build those relationships. We've had Karen Katz at the elementaries for you know, quite some time now. In fact, Breakfast of Champions, I always get the joke, it's been here 20 years since I've been here. Mr. Uh, Maines always has to say that in the breakfast. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maines. Uh, quite a few motivational assemblies on anti-bullying, about how to overcome obstacles at all grade levels, um, K to 12. And parent presentations. We had quite a few presentations this year. Um, I'm sure you're aware. You heard that we had Reed PA come in to talk to our parents about vaping and the dangers of vaping. Um, we also had the um, lead pharmacist from CVS speak about the um, dangers of opioids. And we also had a safety and security presentation. Um, I know that Mr. Corenco was involved with, with uh, I was able to go to each of the PTOs yes. and speak to them about things that were doing in the district, plus talk to junior high parents that move up at night. Um, and, and have frankly had, I know this is parent presentations, but had a great conversation with our 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders as a part of the rollout of Safe to Say, talking to them about trusted adults, people they can go to if they have concerns. Uh, it's a good conversation. We are always, and we'd like to highlight our recognition and awards that we are always seeking grant monies, always applying for grants. Jessica Golden helps us a great deal in this process. This year we received uh, $60,000 towards STEM education, and um, I know just at the last board meeting we actually had Senator Ward come um, and present the Mobile Science and Math Grant. That $50,000 received from that, applicant, that grant application, or grant award, I should say, totally funded our Project Lead the Way biomedical course, where we were um, in need of much equipment as well as training uh, for Mrs. Karanka, who went and implemented that course at our senior high school. And just to say, the sections have increased, correct me if I'm wrong, drastically from last year was the first year that it was implemented. Um, we also received $10,000 toward our STEM education from Robindale Energy. Um, I know Mr. Kremka applied in the grades. you want to talk a little bit about safety and security? Yeah, just there's uh, $45,000 there in two safety security grants um, for upgrades to the school district. And I'll highlight the Safe Schools Program grant of $20,000 that was actually written by Mrs. Golovish that she used uh, to provide a student assistance program liaison um, to our district. Um, and, and even beyond that, and George, I just want to jump to the, the Partners in Education Foundation continue to support the district with $177,000 of additional funding. So if we go back a couple of slides to things like the, the professional learning communities, professional development, social emotional learning, all of those things, look at just those four items in terms of, of grant money into the district, and you've almost got a mill right there. Um, so we continue to try to find um, different avenues and, and different uh, grant programs and, and monies that are out there to support some of the things that we want in addition to just trying to find the right timeline to get them implemented. But um, I didn't mean to take that one. No, 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 I just felt like it, it, it just... Also, dual enrollment yeah. opportunities for our students, scholarships for our seniors, grants for individual classroom teachers. So, um, so much of our programming is supported by that. Um, the next bullet, we always, everybody goes to conferences, you go to conferences, they're great, but you're sitting there and you're saying, we do this, we do this, we do this better, I, we can do this, why aren't we presenting at these conferences? So a personal goal um, was to have our school district um, begin to send in proposals to various state conferences, hopefully then national conferences. And this August, um, our principals at the senior high and uh, junior high school will be presenting at the PA Education Leadership Summit. So they will be talking about personalized learning. I know Mr. Um, Mays is 
uh, with a focus with that uh, junior high professional learning communities in our schedule and our schedule changes with that. So both proposals were accepted and we're extremely excited and we're going to continue um, submitting proposals for various conferences because we feel that, hey, we need to start telling our story. Um, we really do. Niche Award, you heard from the Niche Award, uh, first number one school district in Westmoreland County based on various um, academic programs, rigor, teachers, clubs, activities, etc. Um, our Music Award, which um, we had mentioned and we recognized Tim Sheridan and Richard Serving, we put in for that and um, we were recognized with that award. And last, but by all means not least, the completion and opening of our new Latro Elementary School. Um, state of the art, um, absolutely phenomenal, and um, we definitely wanted to highlight, highlight that and maybe say save the best for last on that whole thing. But Any questions? I know that's a lot of information, but we're just trying to present to you, um, you know, the budget, we're going to talk about professional development, increase in, in science program, K-8, uh, increase in professional development, but Bill, we want to come back and show you what accomplishments have been achieved. Georgia, I just have a question, probably from Matt, actually, about the teaming in junior high and the changes in how we <coughs> teach our kids. I mean, now they're, they're taught in a team of four, four teachers, correct? Sure, just Prim primarily. Four. Are we going to get any kind of results on, on how the students are doing with that system? Whether the teachers like it, how, how it's gone? I, I'm just curious. You are taking I mean, you don't have to do it now. Sure. I'm not saying now, obviously. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. We, are, we are doing some um, in-house survey results of, of what the teachers feel uh, collaboratively, culturally. We've already received a lot of great feedback. Of, of we have less failures this year than we've ever had since. Uh, I've been in there, and I, I knew John and Chad uh, as well, too. And I think the second thing that we're going to look at um, moving forward is using that essential skill data to actually track with our PSSA scores. Are, are those <coughs> rising um, because kids are meeting those essential skills? Are we having less kids in remediation and more kids in enrichment as we move forward? Um, so we definitely have plans to put a data mechanism in place to track this. Those are all the questions. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Yeah, I do have a question. Yes.
school lunch price is two dollars and fifty cents, which naturally ended with three dollars. So I used the pay lunch equity tool to determine uh, what our goal is for next school year. It came out to be a ten cent increase at both the elementary and secondary level. So if you look at our current lunch prices for the secondary level, they are two dollars and sixty five cents. With that ten cent increase for next school year, it would be two seventy five. Our elementary school lunch price is $240 currently, and with a $0.10 cent increase, it will go to $250 next year. I'm also recommending a $0.05 cent jump on our uh, breakfast price district-wide um, for next school year. Um, our current breakfast price is $1.35 or roughly $1.30 for next school year. So if you look at our, the county, uh, the, our, the school in Westmoreland County, you'll see that Greater Latrobe is right in, on the average with everybody else when it comes to school breakfast and lunch prices. Thank you, You're welcome. All right, that being said, I move for adoption of resolution number 239, which is approval of the 2019-2020 food service meal pricing. Second. I have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 240 to approve the treasurer's report. Second. We have a motion on floor. Second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 241 to approve the payment of bill. Second. We have a motion on floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 242 to appoint Act 511 tax collectors for 2019-2020. Second. We have a motion on floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 243, which is to approve the 2019-2020 designation of depositories. Second. We have a motion on floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. We move for adoption of resolution number 244 which is the authorization to invest funds for 2019-2020. Second. The motion on floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 245, <coughs> excuse me, to reappoint school district treasurer for June 30th, 2020. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. We move for adoption of resolution number 246 to approve fund balance transfers. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? Mr. Hauser, could you just explain very briefly why we're doing that? Uh, the very little school district hereby approves the transfer of 400000 from the general fund that signed fund balance into a capital reserve fund to be restricted for capital projects as of May 14th. And this is basically the old LES uh, monies. And is this in response to a concern about uh, work that may have yeah, been done was, at the vote Certainly. It makes it accessible for us to gain access to who if that does materialize at uh, the uh, PWC. Any other questions or comments? No, no, much of that actually will actually rely on what the other school districts are going to, to do with participate yes, and how they're going to participate. Am I correct? Yes. So uh, and, and tell me something. something, when will the, uh, the, uh, the study be, be done? Um, I can tell you that, uh, to my knowledge, uh, at the May 22nd, 23rd, um, the CBM meeting, um, there will be 
a recommendation to hire a firm to do the feasibility study, which I think is too bad in September. I think that's the timeline. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 247, which is to approve the GASB number 75 resolution, which is uh, hereby approves the Holly Consulting Group, and uh, they will perform this service uh, for a fee of $5,900. Second. We have, we have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 248, which is to approve like the life insurance. Second. A motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 249 to approve 2020 real estate tax assessment appeals program. Second. A motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resolution number 250, which is to approve the 2019-2020 general front proposed bond budget. And I need a second. Second. A motion on the floor and second, and this will be a roll call vote. Please, Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Maines? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Alberto? No. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Dr. Zurich? Yes. Mrs. Kozak? Yes. Mr. Lazer? Yes. Mr. Magnesia? Yes. Mr. Hauser? Yes. Uh, 
Two pieces of information. First, the Great Lakes Road School Community Picnic will be held Monday, June 10th at Idlewild and Soap Zone. And the meeting minutes from the last Lake Trobe GLSD Parks and Recreation Commission uh, are attached. That was in March, on March 21st. The next meeting will be held on Thursday, May 16th at 4.30 at the Lake Trobe Municipal Building in the Green Room. Thank you, Mr. Cassian. Westmoreland Intermediate Unit, Lee Ainslow, Maine. Thank you. Um, summary of the WIU
Mr. Fine, would it be fair to say that it would probably take more than one person to do both East schools and things? Definitely. And at one time we used to do that, am I correct? We did. In house. So and, and we had about a Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I have about a fifty five to sixty thousand dollar year savings for the positions that we were able to replace for that Penn City school support. Uh, yeah, actually, I have a larger amount than that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have. That we're saving uh, over two hundred thousand dollars a year over a seven-year period. It's equated to about one point six million dollars. Well, what I'm asking for is the people that we have uh, in place to, to do the work. But uh, you're telling me that the, the apparently. It is. I understand the volume of the information that gets submitted and collected and. Um, analyzed for the PIN submission and it grows every year. It's very um, tedious and meticulous and there's a lot of funding tied to it. There is nobody uh, that we currently have that we could we could push this on to on top of things they're already doing. Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. And that motion passes. Uh, move for the adoption of resolution number 256 to approve renewal of memorandum of understanding with CCL Technologies contracts for on site support staff and technology staff. No motion on the floor, second. What questions or comments on the motion? And what is the cost of uh, this resolution? Uh, this so, one. No, this one for next year will be $211,020. And again, this is a part of outsourcing also. Yes. Mm -hmm. there, were, there were positions that we were able to replace. And Dan, I don't know if you have a number on the savings from the big contract. I'm sorry. I'm That's what I referenced last time. Oh, gotcha. Okay. What was your total amount over all the years? About one, one point six million dollars. In savings. In savings, savings. yes. You know, obviously, uh, you know, when you have that many staff, we would have to hire to take on that responsibility with the benefits, with the retirement. Um, it's, yeah, it's significant savings by having a third party do it. Any other questions on the motion? You're saying the savings is one point? Yeah, one point six. It's about 200. I can tell you, 2011 12, we saved $235,000. In 12 13, we saved 227000 same 13, 14, 15, 16 was 273, and in 15, 16 was 300, and 16, 17 was 293, and in 17, 18 was 282. So that totals, and my apologies because I can't see well in my glasses, it's actually $1,841,000 over that period. And what I will tell you, I did not add in increased cost per user. So it's and that's based on how many employees? That, I don't know if I have that. Well, I might have that I, I have five full time positions, um, two secretaries, uh, instructional technology specialists is what I have. Yeah, I do that. So, so, so when, when we get away with, uh, with doing it in house, there were seven people that were terminated? Yeah. No, they well, were terminated. Um, some of them were put back into classes. Some of them teachers. were teachers were kind of filling a uh, technology support role that we moved back into the classroom. Okay. And some worked in a data center. We're talking back in 11, 12. I, I, I understand. I, I'm just wondering how you come up with $1.6 million. Oh, I know. It's, it's, it's significant. I'm happy to share the numbers with you. They are automatically. Any other questions on the motion? By the way, that goes back to being able to control those costs, non visas related. Some of those things we put in place when we were cut over $2 million in state and federal funding, um, they weren't just one time savings, they were reoccurring over year, year after year after year. So I think it's important we don't lose sight of that. You know, even when we negotiated the last transportation contract, you know, that was savings, significant savings in year one, freezing year two. But that, you add that over a seven year period, that number becomes a big, big number. Um, so well, that was one that's definitely paid us back. Just so you understand where I'm coming from, uh, when we're talking about you know, a budget that actually has a millage increase, I'm going to look at every, every line item to see if we 
we can actually cut, make a cut so that we don't have to raise taxes. And that's where I'm coming from. And you, know, you can argue that fact. But, uh, oh, I'm not. You, you, that's your job. You need to ask those questions and we need to provide you with feedback. But I think what I'm trying to share right now is to go back from outsourcing that technology and hiring staff internally, that's going to be additional cost. That's going to take your one mil increase higher. It's not going to go the other way. So that's the only thing that I would be So basically, you're telling me with the staff that we have, we could not give anybody any extra work. I'm not saying that. I think if you, I don't want to speak for Dr. Pinus, but she feels nobody is qualified within our uh, district to handle that level of responsibility. Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I oppose. That motion passes. We move for the adoption of resolution number 257 to approve the Unified Communications Maintenance Contract with CCL Technologies for the Unified Communications Communications Support. Second. I have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. And the next technology, the technology committee meeting minutes were from April 16th and the cash. And that concludes my Thank you, Mr. Ozark. Superintendent's recommendation, Mrs. Spider. I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 258, which is the creation of the payroll manager position. So moved. Second. A motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 259, which is the approval of the resignations listed. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passed. And I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 260, which is the approval of two additional substitute teachers for the last two weeks of school. Hooray. No move. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passed. And I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 261, which is the approval of professional personnel, and I will read the names of the positions. Um, Terry Johnson for art education at Bachelor Step 2 at a total of $46,007. She is certified in art pre-K through 12. Jordan Jury, who is physical education, Bachelor Step 1, which is salary of $45,707. Health and PE certification pre-K through 12. Elizabeth Thompson for elementary general music band, step two, master's plus 30, at a salary of 49,007. She certified music PK, pre-K through 12. For elementary general music choral, Brooke Sachaki, and if I said it wrong, you can correct me later. <laughs> um, she is step one, bachelor's, at 45,707. She's also certified music pre-K through 12. And Ashley Lopinski, uh, special education, step one, master's, 47,707. She is certified in elementary K to six, special ed, pre-K through 12, early childhood, English seven through 12, reading specialist, pre-K through 12. Thank you. So moved. Second. A motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. And as we continue our um, hiring for next year with our retirements next month, we will invite these candidates, these uh, teachers of Greater Latrobe, to come here to meet the board with the other new candidates. I ask the board to move on resolution number 262 which is the appointment of support personnel, including our student summer workers. So moved. Yeah. A motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. 
And I ask the board to move on resolution number 263, which is the approval of support personnel supplemental. Um, uh, Mr. Mears and Dr. Shepard is uh, cheerleading in reviews, and these are our candidates. So moved. Second. 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 Motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Were those all eyes? <laughs> yes. There was some yes. 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 So moved. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye! Opposed? <laughs> 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 I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 265, which is the, employee, the approval of employee benefit and pay plans effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2021. So moved. We have a motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? Has this document been revised when we looked at the yes. yes. It's yes. already been revised. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. And I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 266 which is the approval of the employee benefit and pay plan for the payroll manager position. So moved. Okay. Okay. Motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion <coughs> um, As you notice, under other business, there are quite a few things going on in the school district weeks, um, please look at them. Um, you certainly uh, attend many of the um, items. I will note um, the seniors' elementary school walk. This is year three. Um, our students, our seniors, go to their elementary school in which they attended and go through with their cap and gowns on. And it's really a very nice experience. If you want to come and watch, it really um, um, makes you feel good. Um, baccalaureate this year is at Lake Trobe United Methodist Church on Wednesday, May 29th. Again, it's a wonderful opportunity for our senior class and parents and everyone else to get together to celebrate um, them as a class. And obviously then we have commencement. Uh, rain um, holding off, we will be having it Thursday, May 30th at Rossi Field. If it uh, has to be postponed, it will be scheduled for Friday, May 31st. Please see Mrs. Brahoski for tickets that evening. If you're planning to attend, hopefully you all of you can. Um, please just see her before you leave this evening. Um, uh, one of the other reasons Merle has been at sixth grade camp, this is his um, second day. He has uh, three, six, seven more to go. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate your being here this evening, but we also appreciate all the time that you spend at sixth grade camp. I know that it's something you enjoy doing, but it really is something that we appreciate your volunteering to do. Um, also at your seats tonight is the WIU board election sheet. Um, they must have left somebody off back in the day. Um, so if you didn't already fill it out, if you wouldn't mind filling it out and giving it back to Mrs. Brahoski. Does everybody have a copy of this on your seat? Um, it looks like this. Um, and, and nobody can figure out why they do it this way. I know we always say that. But if you wouldn't mind filling that out before you leave and turning that into Mrs. Brahoski. Um, I appreciate um, the attentiveness tonight. Um, we know that we canceled our meeting next Tuesday because of the election day. Um, so thank you for your patience this evening. Our meetings in June are Tuesday, June 11th, and Tuesday, June 18th, um, here at the center. Um, thank you very much. And let's encourage everyone to go vote on Tuesday. Yes, yes. Everyone to go vote on next Tuesday. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to open the floor for, for a hearing of visitors part two. This is where anyone can stand up the podium. State your name and address and speak of any, any concerns they have with the district.
Seeing no one, I move for adoption of resolution number 267 with the adjournment. Okay. Motion on the floor is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.